Hey everybody, welcome back for part two of my featured artist interview for Oakland Creates 2022. This time we have Robert Lou Trujillo, and I'm so happy just to jump right into this. So let's go. Like I picked up books because of seeing movies, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah. connected those dots. It was like, oh, I'm going to go get the 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 book that they showed all the places photographed in, in wild style. Like I can go visit these places and get books and read about it. So it yeah. definitely makes a difference. Um, and so um, my next question too is, um, do you have a particular type of music that you listen to while you create? A lot of times I, I'll throw on a horror movie because I love horror movies and just have an action movie, horror movie playing in the background. Uh, my friends make fun of me because I often have to watch movies several times to get it, but they don't get like, I'll have it on, but I'm not watching the screen. Right. I'm just have, I love the vibrancy of the sounds, even if it sounds weird to watch Jason or Michael in sure. the background, but I'll have that on. Or if I listen to, if I do listen to music, it'll be some type of video. So there's a visual stimulation, an audio stimulation. Uh, but I have a huge list of eclectic uh, love for music. What kind of music do you listen to or movies do you enjoy? I would say the majority of the music I listen to is hip hop, soul, jazz, and a little bit of reggae or dub and uh, house music. Any and, particular artist? Yeah. So in the past five years, I've been really getting into house and I, I feel like I've slept on so much. <laughs> There's so much that has happened that I just did not, I wasn't privy to, or people wasn't in my community, wasn't into it, uh, or I just didn't know. So I'm, I've been really going back and kind of listening to old records and being able to catch some of the new stuff. So like Kate Renato, of course, that's an easy one. Um, there's a, a guy named Phil Asher from the UK. I love his remixes. Nice. Um, Joe Clausel, Clausel, I think his name is. Um, uh, Kaidi Tatum, who's like a uh, part of this other group called Bugs in the Attic. There's a whole bunch of artists that I slept on who I'm going back and kind of uh, listening to and vibing with now. I don't know if I was you I was talking to about um, Ten City. Go pick up Ten City. You, you, I don't you, know that one. Your mind will be blown. Oh my God. That okay. was when I was a, a kid in high school. A uh, song called Devotion by Ten City. But if you look them up, get that song, uh, Devotion by Ten City, you'll see the rest of their stuff. Okay. I think you'll love it. I love, uh, and I know a couple people from Chicago. So if you ever want me to um, hook you up, like I know a couple DJs actually that hook you up with okay. some, um, some dope, uh, like underground house stuff that you might not have ever heard of, but they are deep into it. So that's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, sure, of course. Um, I love house music and progressive and dance and all that kind of music. Um, so do you have a dedicated art space in, in your home or like I'd usually just if I'm not I have an art studio, but if I'm not over there, I'll be just a little set up in the corner of the living room. Do you have a dedicated um, art space? Uh, right now, it's it's basically my mom's uh, dining room. So okay. I, me and my wife just moved in with my my mom and my stepdad and it's a big change because before we had our own spaces but basically it's a, it's the dining room there's 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 a a smaller dining room next to their their kitchen okay. which they use more frequently and a bigger dining room and so we took over the dining room but i would say i've never had a a, a dedicated art studio it's always you know try to get it in in the corner here okay. just like you here or there i just okay. kind of work with what i can do you um do you have a rule like I have a friend who um when her husband would come home she had a little table and desk and everything and when she's at the table and desk with her laptop during certain hours don't talk to her she's in work mode do you have any <laughs> of those agreements or any rules like that around your space no not really I mean me and my wife both both work with like headphones on so I think if there's something prescient or important we can go you know tap the other person on the shoulder but if we're in a meeting or if we're in a call like yeah no nah, don't don't talk to me cool cool does your baby uh, agree to those rules too <laughs> not at all not at all which which is why working from home is like what no uh, so she's got to be in in daycare or school otherwise there's no work getting done yeah some of my co-workers babies are like popping their head in it's cute but it's I'm sure it's like Oh, sweetheart, this is not the time. Yeah, I mean, if, if you have a, a, a partnership with anyone, it's it's helpful to have one person 
I, I'm going to work at this time and you watch the kid at that time. Yeah. So are there any other artists that you kind of uh, like in other mediums, like actors or dancers, photographers, or maybe even poets that mm. you draw inspiration from? Uh, I really am into Toni Morrison and James Baldwin, but I'm also into, you know, certain um, independent, um, you know, directors. Um, and so I, I like, you know, uh, like, uh, uh, Cheryl Dunye really inspires me. She's a um, film director. Anybody in another genre that really inspires you? Yeah, um, there's there's a, a brother named, um, what's his name? Bradford Young, and he's a cinematographer. And through him, he was he shot a bunch of films for Ava DuVernay. That's how I found him. Mm. And he he would mention this, this guy named Roy De Carava, and I had never heard of him before. Okay. And so when I looked him up, I was really inspired by it. It's basically one photograph, one photographer to another, except that one was doing film and one was doing, um, you know, traditional pictures with the camera. And looking at both of their works is super inspiring for me, just because oftentimes with a, a scene or a setting, I, I, I want to try to evoke a, an emotion or to try and make the lighting look a little bit more interesting. If If I get into my bag of what works, I can kind of do the same thing and paint that over and over again, but it's fun to try and do something a little bit different. So I would say, yeah, Roy De Carava, Bradford Young. And I think there is a, a young jazz musician from the UK names like Sala C Sin Sinefro or something like that. Mm -hmm. She has this album where it's called Space. And so I, I love listening to that. That's a, a new record I really dig. There's, there's yeah, there's, there's a lot of them. Um, I, I, again, stop motion animation, looking at that is really inspiring. There's a bunch of different directions. Now, would you ever play an instrument or take up music? Like I always tell myself, I wanna learn how to play the piano or play the drums or uh, any interest, inter, instruments that you think you'd be interested in playing? Yeah, I mean, I would love to learn um, basically like beat making, like how to use equipment to be able to construct beats and to make music that way, I think. When I was when I was younger, probably in my teens is when I started collecting records and getting the bug after seeing Juice back in the day to mm -hmm. to be a DJ. And I was a bedroom DJ for quite a while. I no nice. longer have turntables, but I spent many, many hours uh, practicing mixing and scratching and beat juggling and all that stuff. And so that's that's a, a musical love I have. So I can I can keep the tempo. I can keep time and all that. I like DJ Cuber. Anybody, any DJ that you really like? Oh my God, so many of them. I mean, uh, Breakbeat Lou, he's uh, Breakbeat Lou is his brother from New York, who he's one of the people that uh, brought us Ultimate Beats and or Breaks and Beats, which is used to be like this compilation where you could get old funk or jazz or rock records that people used in hip hop uh, very regularly that maybe are hard to find or out of print or just not regularly available. And they would put really cool illustrations or paintings on the cover of uh, hip hop stuff or DJs. So Breakbeat Lou, um, I love hearing him. Rich Medina, who's from Jersey and Philly. I loved hearing him play like Afrobeat music and just throw a whole sink in there. There's this uh, Japanese cat by the name of uh, Coco. And he's he only uh, only time I seen him DJs with 45s, but he's really incredible to watch. He just throw everything in the kitchen sink, but it all matched tempos. Um, DJ Newmark from LA, there's so many, there's, there's a lot. Yeah, I'm trying to look up the one guy. Um, what is his name that he does? I love Cuber as well. Cuber is really dope. Oh, it's a DJ Shadow that I kind of got into. Yeah, Shadow's dope. Uh, um, and then a couple other like garage band or garage DJ that kind of broke through. Like mm -hmm. people that work with like the Living Legends or yeah yeah um, people like people under stairs those kind of groups are really my favorite type of groups yeah yeah me too. um let's see what's my next question um we're almost done we're almost wrapped up here uh oh yeah I, why traditional media painting and drawing with pencil and uh, actual paints instead of digital i have my own quirks and hang-ups about digital art like it's too slick. It's too glossy for me. Um, yeah. Why? Why do you choose um, traditional paints, pencils, and all that? I mean, the quickest answer is that it's easy and it's what I'm used to. 
Nice. And the, the digital is uh, much harder to learn. I use both. Um, oftentimes when I'm working with clients or uh, an organization or, or someone who's paying me to, to a commission to make work, I'll use digital for the sketch process to kind of like map out what it is and then to be able to make changes really easily, usually using the iPad and Photoshop. But um, I paint in watercolor and acrylic and that is kind of my bread and butter because I'm so used to working with those mediums. Mm -hmm. But I, I I get really inspired by seeing people who can paint well digitally. Like um, there's a company in Berkeley called uh, Tonko House and they're, they're animators from Pixar who they're kind of doing their own thing and they paint digitally just beautifully, beautifully. Like the light, the color, the texture. Um, I've been really inspired by seeing people who can paint well digitally um, mm -hmm. and not have it look so slick or too clean but like really have a not just a painterly feel but like a feel like it's it's um it's lit well like it's bright it's vibrant it's colorful shout out your um shout out the festival you're having and your social media links that kind of thing well um thank you for for having me it's, it's an honor to be um, a part of this show and to really see how much work you've put into it over the years uh, I would just say for people who are watching to come to Oakland Creates and, and check it out and to meet people and to really support independent artwork and independent makers because, you know, if, if, if people can get online and complain about the, the corporate stuff, they can come and support some some hometown makers for sure. Exactly. Um, and then, yeah, I would just say you can look me up at Rob Don't Stop. All my social media stuff is, is from there. So you can call at me. So the full URL for that? It is Rob, R-O-B-D-O-N-T-S-T-O-P.com, robdonstop.com. And you um, have the um, the festival, the Social Justice Festival. Uh, oh, yes. Details about that. Yeah, so that the Social Justice, uh, it's a mouthful, the Social Justice <laughs> Children's Book Holiday Fair, that happens on December 11th in uh, Berkeley, California, and that's uh, that's after Open Creates. And then before Oakland Creates, I'll be doing something called San Jose Made, which is in the San Jose area, South Bay. Nice. nice. <laughs> no, no. Um, but I look forward to that. And I thank you so much. I'm so grateful you could join us. I've been asking you for a while to be a part of Oakland Creates. And so I'm glad you could do it this year. So grateful for your work, your thank dedication you. to actually, you know, showing up and doing work that matters, in my opinion, and that makes definitely a difference and changes folks' outlook for real. So I thank you. I'm grateful for you, bro. I thank you. Likewise. Your, your efforts. for it's, It doesn't go unseen, for real. And I like you. you, how you are with your family and your people, I, I it's rare now. Unfortunately, it's rare now that people uh, you give up a little bit of themselves to spread good, good love and good messaging out there. So thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for this interview. Um, thank you. All right, then that wraps up the a featured artist interview with Rob Trujillo. So this is footage from behind the scenes of putting together Oakland Creates. Stay tuned for this vlog. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned for Oakland Creates 2022 vlog. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe.